The B-18 explosion tore open SpaceX's newest version 3 booster. The liquid oxygen tank ruptured, the methane tank deformed, and debris scattered across a starbase. Most expected total failure. But what engineers found in the wreckage surprised everyone. The massive fuel transfer tube survived nearly intact, even at the blast center. The booster remained standing despite catastrophic damage to its tanks. Could this destruction actually prove V3's design works? What hidden strengths did SpaceX discover that have NASA reconsidering their assessment? Let's dive right in. When SpaceX engineers approached B-18 the morning after, they expected the worst. The explosion had been violent enough to shake windows across Starbase. Metal fragments lay scattered across the test site. Yet as they documented the damage, something remarkable emerged from the wreckage. The fuel transfer tube stood almost completely intact. This massive component, upgraded to match Falcon 9's proven design, had survived forces that shredded the outer tank walls. Only a small puncture marked where the explosion originated, right inside the liquid oxygen section. Think about that for a moment. The blast epicenter sat directly against this tube, yet it held together. What does this tell us about V3's core upgrades? Could this single component change how we evaluate the entire incident? The old V2 transfer tube would have been torn apart under identical conditions. SpaceX knew this because they'd studied failure patterns from previous tests. The V3 tube essentially functions as the booster's spine, carrying propellant from main tanks down to 33 Raptor engines during critical flight phases. Its survival means SpaceX can now confidently move forward with faster flip maneuvers and simultaneous engine starts. Capabilities that seemed theoretical just weeks ago. But there's more to this story than one tough pipe. B-18 refused to fall. Despite the liquid oxygen tank being ripped open and the methane tank visibly deformed, the booster remained vertical throughout the entire ordeal. This shouldn't have been possible. The damaged section sits near the test tank region where massive propellant loads create extreme structural stress during ground operations. Engineers ran calculations immediately after the blast. A collapse at that point would have triggered a chain reaction, potentially destroying surrounding infrastructure and setting the Starship program back months. So why didn't it collapse? What kept 11 stories of damaged rockets standing when physics suggested otherwise? The answer lies in V3's reinforced frame design. SpaceX had quietly strengthened the structural layout between versions, adding redundancy that most observers never noticed. The improved transfer tube contributed here too, acting as central support even as outer walls failed. This combination created what engineers call graceful degradation, where a system maintains basic function despite catastrophic damage to individual components. NASA's own structural analysts had questioned whether such resilience was achievable at Starship scale. B-18 just proved them wrong. The forward section told another crucial story. Hot staging hardware, integrated grid fins, navigation systems, all showed zero damage when inspection teams finally accessed them. This wasn't luck. The forward section had already been separated from the damaged body, yes, but it also sits far from where the incident occurred. SpaceX had deliberately reinforced this region, knowing it handles stage separation, precision maneuvering, and eventually tower catch attempts. Can you see the pattern forming here? Every critical system that survived was something SpaceX had specifically upgraded for V3. But perhaps the most important factor wasn't hardware at all. SpaceX chose to run structural stress tests before introducing cryogenic propellant. This decision, made weeks earlier during schedule planning, prevented disaster. Had they rushed to cryo testing first, as timelines pressured them to do, the explosion would have occurred with tanks full of super cold methane and oxygen. The resulting fireball would have consumed the entire test stand, possibly spreading to nearby vehicles and facilities. How many millions in damage did that one procedural choice prevent? How many months of delays? Industry veterans immediately recognized the significance. Blue Origin's test philosophy has always favored incremental validation, but SpaceX's rapid iteration culture sometimes skips intermediate steps to maintain momentum. This time, they followed the cautious path. The contrast between what happened and what could have happened reveals how much SpaceX has matured as an organization.
They're learning when to slow down. Yet honest assessment demands we examine what failed. The fuel tanks remain Starship's most vulnerable components. When exposed to cryogenic propellants at minus 297 degrees Fahrenheit for liquid oxygen and minus 259 for methane, these tanks face pressure and temperature stresses that push stainless steel to its limits. The B-18 rupture likely originated from a weakness in weld joints or inadequate reinforcement layers. SpaceX must now implement protective measures, additional structural ribbing, redesign weld patterns, or possibly new alloy compositions in stress zones. Each tank holds hundreds of tons of propellant. There's no margin for error when a single leak can cascade into explosive failure. The internal plumbing network faces similar scrutiny. These lines function like arteries, delivering precise fuel and oxidizer flows throughout the vehicle. Cracks develop from vibration. Blockages form from contamination. Stress fractures appear at connection points. A failure anywhere compromises the entire mission. Starship's sheer scale makes this exponentially harder. We're talking about plumbing systems larger than most buildings. Every valve, every connector, every meter of piping must withstand repeated thermal cycling, launch vibrations, and the corrosive nature of rocket propellants. Where exactly did B-18's plumbing fail? What microscopic flaw triggered everything? The engine compartment awaits its biggest transformation yet. B-18 never received its Raptor 3 engines due to the incident, but B-19 will debut all 33 upgraded power plants. Raptor 3 delivers significantly more thrust through a simplified design, which sounds positive until you consider integration challenges. The engine bay layout must adapt to different mounting points, revised plumbing interfaces, and altered thermal management. A foundation weak in any area risks catastrophic consequences during static fires or flight. SpaceX learned this during early Starship development when engine bay fires destroyed multiple prototypes. The ship's vacuum raptors demand equal attention despite their smaller numbers. These specialized engines operate in space's harsh environment, handling orbital maneuvers and controlled re-entry. Several V-2 flights lost ships to engine failures during these critical phases. V-3 cannot repeat those mistakes if it wants to achieve its orbital refueling and lunar mission objectives. Each vacuum raptor costs millions and requires months to produce. Reliability here isn't just about success rates, it's about economics and schedule viability. Then there's the heat shield, perhaps Starship's most scrutinized system. Ceramic tiles protect the ship during re-entry when atmospheric friction generates temperatures exceeding 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Unlike V2, where flight served as experiments, V3 carries expectations of rapid reusability. The tiles must not only survive, but remain in condition, allowing quick refurbishment between flights. Achieving this on a vehicle the size of a 747 fuselage presents unprecedented challenges. How many tiles can SpaceX afford to replace between missions while maintaining their ambitious launch cadence? Progress continues despite setbacks. Ship 39 completed stacking and moved into detailed inspection phases. At the Massey test site, Structural stress tests will verify the ship can handle physical strain before any propellant gets introduced. Cryogenic testing follows, pushing tanks and plumbing under freezing conditions that simulate flight environments. If S-39 passes these trials, it returns to Mega Bay 2 for Raptor 3 installation, then proceeds to static fire testing. This sequence could conclude before December ends, putting the first V-3 ship ahead of schedule. B-19 follows a similar but slightly delayed path. Stacking should complete by mid to late December, with cryo-testing occurring near month's end or early January. SpaceX applies the same careful validation approach that saved B-18 from worse damage. After passing cryo-tests, B-19 gets its engine complement and prepares for what might become rocketry's most powerful ground test, over 9,000 tons of thrust from 33 Raptor 3 engines firing simultaneously. Could this happen by mid-January? If so, Flight 12 targets late January or early February launch windows. That timeline matters tremendously. SpaceX faces pressure from multiple contracts. NASA's Artemis program needs a working Starship for lunar missions. Starlink deployment rates depend on higher launch cadence. And commercial customers await payload capacity only Starship can provide. Every month of delay ripples across these commitments. But rushing now risks repeating B-18's outcome. 
possibly worse. Where's the balance between speed and safety? SpaceX has turned wreckage into validation. The B-18 explosion that looked like total failure actually proved V-3's core systems work under the most extreme conditions. That intact fuel transfer tube, the standing frame, the undamaged forward section, these aren't minor details. They're evidence that SpaceX's boldest upgrades can survive what would have destroyed previous versions. History keeps repeating this pattern. After the first V-2 failures, everyone questioned whether Starship would ever fly reliably. Then came two consecutive successful launches, closing out the year. The Ship 36 incident seemed catastrophic until lessons learned led directly to those victories. Why should we expect anything different from B-18? What makes anyone think SpaceX won't extract every data point from this setback and come back stronger? The real victory here isn't that nothing broke. It's that the right thing survived. The system SpaceX needs for orbital refueling, for lunar missions, for catching boosters at the tower. Those proved their resilience when it mattered most. And critically, this happened during ground testing, not during a $50 million flight attempt with the world watching. Flight 12 could launch within weeks carrying the full weight of V3's promise. 33 Raptor 3 engines firing together for the first time, a heat shield designed for rapid reuse, tanks and plumbing rebuilt from hard-earned lessons. NASA isn't shocked by the explosion. They're shocked that SpaceX found the silver lining so quickly and turned it into actionable improvements. The next leap is coming faster than anyone expected. Are you ready to witness it? If this breakdown changed how you see the B-18 incident, hit that like button and let me know in the comments what surprised you most about V3's hidden strengths. Subscribe to Space Update 24 hours so you don't miss Flight 12's coverage when history gets made. Share this with anyone who thought B-18 meant failure. They need to see what SpaceX really discovered in that wreckage.